so now we'll continue with cerebellar peduncles so what is the cerebellar peduncles they are the peduncles that will connect the brain stem with cerebellum <coughs> so the brain stem mainly mid brain pons and medulla is connected to the cerebellum through superior middle and inferior cerebellar peduncles so superior cerebellar peduncle will connect mid brain to cerebellum so the efferent and efferent fibers passing to the mid brain will be passing via superior cerebellar peduncle middle will connect pons to cerebellum and inferior will connect medulla to cerebellum so one of the very common thing that you should know about each peduncle is what are the fibers that is passing through each peduncle so look at that figure so these are the fibers which you find passing through the cerebellar peduncles so now first we'll start with the inferior cerebellar peduncle okay so a list of fibers is given there you are reading that posterior spinal cerebellar olivo spinal cerebellar parolivo cerebellar a very large huge list is there but it is very easy to remember that once you think or you focus on certain points shall i say that to you okay so think of inferior cerebellar peduncle that will connect medulla to cerebellum fine so you find both efferent fibers are passing and efferent fibers are passing so first think of the efferent fibers a efferent fibers passing from medulla to cerebellum always remember that posterior spinal cerebellar or otherwise termed as the clark's column sensation will pass through the inferior cerebellar peduncle <coughs> so the first fibers posterior spinal cerebellar that you should remember is passing through inferior cerebellar peduncle and always remember posterior spinal cerebellar is passing through inferior spine inferior cerebellar peduncle this anterior spinal cerebellar is passing through superior cerebellar peduncle now you imagine a cut section of medulla that is already been taken to you imagine a cut section of medulla in that you are finding different parts one is inferior olivary nucleus do you remember that in that section you have seen only inferior olivary nucleus which has got a crumbled bag appearance and so the fibers starting from that that is what is termed as olivo cerebellar next efferent fiber so first one is posterior spinous cerebellar second one is olivo cerebellar close to that olivary nucleus you are seeing one more nucleus of medulla and that is accessory olivary nucleus i remembering that accessory olivary nucleus from there you get the next fiber parolivo cerebellar so posterior spinal cerebellar fibers olivo cerebellar coming from the inferior olivary nucleus and parolivo cerebellar coming from accessory olivary nucleus and now you get an arcuate nucleus there in the medulla fine and the fibers taking origin from these arcuate nucleus and that is what is termed as anterior external arcuate fibers fine and one more nucleus was there in medulla and that was accessory cuneate nucleus very close to the cuneate nucleus you have got an accessory cuneate nucleus also and the fibers taking origin from that is cuneo cerebellar otherwise termed as posterior external arcuate fibers now you have got the vestibular there and the reticular so you get reticulo cerebellar and vestibulo cerebellar so now it's very easy to remember the fibers passing through inferior cerebellar peduncle what are they think of the efferent fibers first is posterior spinal cerebellar next one is from inferior olivary nucleus you get olivo cerebellar from accessory olivary nucleus you get parolivo cerebellar then from arcuate nucleus you get anterior external arcuate fibers then from the 
accessory cuneate nucleus you get cuneo cerebellar or posterior external arcuate fibers then you get reticulo cerebellar and vestibulo cerebellar so these are the efferent fibers now think of the efferent fibers efferent fibers are efferent and efferent connections are there between reticular system and vestibular nucleus so the efferent fibers will be cerebello vestibular and cerebello reticular in addition to that you get one more fiber termed as cerebello olivary so now it's easy try to remember the fibers passing through inferior cerebellar pedangle efferent fibers 1 posterior spinal cerebellar 2 olivo cerebellar 3 parolivo cerebellar 4 anterior external arcuate fibers 5 cuneo cerebellar or posterior external arcuate fibers then reticulo cerebellar and vestibulo cerebellar efferent fibers cerebello vestibular cerebello reticular and cerebello olivary so now you have studied the fibers passing through inferior cerebellar pedangle fine now we go to the next part middle cerebellar pedangle so this middle cerebellar pedangle will connect pons to cerebellum and always remember the main efferent fiber passing through it is ponto cerebellar that is forming pathway of cortico ponto cerebellar fibers from the cortex cerebral cortex to the pontine nucleus from the pontine nucleus these fibers will cross towards the opposite cerebellum and then enters the cerebellum through the middle cerebellar pedangle so ponto cerebellar so that is the main fiber you find passing through middle cerebellar pedangle now we come to the superior cerebellar pedangle so superior cerebellar pedangle you already know connects mid brain to what cerebellum fine so now you have got efferent fibers and efferent fibers so now remember i have already told you posterior spinal cerebellar was passing through inferior do you remember that posterior spinal cerebellar was the efferent fibers passing through inferior cerebellar pedangle so always remember anterior spinal cerebellar tract is passing through superior cerebellar pedangle so first fiber anterior spinal cerebellar then close to that you have got the tectum tectum is the part of mid brain you have studied tectum so from the tectum you get the fibers going to the cerebellum so you call it as tecto cerebellar then very close to that you get the trigeminal nucleus and from there you find the fibers going towards the cerebellum and that is what is termed as trigemino cerebellar fine then you get ceruleo cerebellar that is from the locus ceruleus to the cerebellum ceruleo cerebellar and then from the hypothalamus to cerebellum that is hypothalamo cerebellar so these are the five efferent fibers that you should remember one anterior spinal cerebellar to tectum of mid brain to the cerebellum so you call it as tecto cerebellar then from the trigeminal towards the cerebellum you call it as trigemino cerebellar then ceruleo cerebellar and hypothalamo cerebellar so these are the five efferent fibers now you get the efferent fibers the efferent fibers is passing through the mid brain name them one of the most important nucleus you get in the mid brain is red nucleus so from the cerebellum to the red nucleus you call it as cerebello rubral fibers and one more fibers are there the fibers taking origin from the dentate nucleus to the red nucleus you call it as dentato rubral and dentato thalamic tract then you get cerebello olivary and cerebello reticular which is also common to inferior cerebellar pedangle so these are the efferent fibers passing through superior cerebellar pedangle recollect them once more efferent fibers one cerebello rubral then dentato rubral and dentato thalamic two common things cerebello olivary and cerebello reticular 
look at the inferior cerebellar peduncle you find cerebello olivary and cerebello reticular now say the fibers are passing through the superior cerebellar peduncle both efferent and efferent efferent anterior spinocerebellar 2 tectocerebellar 3 trigeminocerebellar 4 ceruleocerebellar and 5 hypothalamocerebellar efferent fibers cerebello rubral dentato rubral and dentato thalamic cerebello olivary and cerebello reticular so with that we finish the fibers passing through each pedangle so look at that figure you are seeing the three pedangles being marked there you are seeing the superior cerebellar pedangle connecting the cerebellum to midbrain you are seeing the prominent middle cerebellar pedangle connecting cerebellum to pounds and finally inferior cerebellar connecting uh, cerebellum with pyramid sorry with uh, medulla so with that we finish the cerebellar pedangles now we come to the arterial supply cerebellum is mainly supplied by three arteries one is superior cerebellar artery anterior inferior cerebellar artery and posterior inferior cerebellar arteries so the first two superior cerebellar arteries and anterior inferior cerebellar artery are branches of basilar artery fine and pica that is posterior inferior cerebellar artery is a branch coming from vertebral artery fine so look at that figure you are seeing the basilar arteries two vertebral arteries are you seeing there these two vertebral arteries are joining together to form the basilar artery so from the vertebral artery to supply the cerebellum you get you just get one branch that is pica posterior inferior cerebellar artery the other two superior cerebellar and anterior inferior cerebellar comes from basilar artery so superior cerebellar artery supplying the superior surface the inferior surface is being supplied inferior surface of cerebellum is being supplied by anterior inferior and posterior inferior cerebellar so anterior inferior will supply the anterior part of the inferior surface of cerebellum and posterior inferior will supply the posterior part of the inferior surface of cerebellum okay so that's clear you remember three arteries fine now we come to the last part applied anatomy so cerebellar syndrome is very common it can be either due to trauma or vascular injury or tumor whatever be the cause you get a large number of signs and symptoms being presented by the patient so one typical feature will be muscular hypotonia the tone of the muscles will be less and second one is intention tremor what does that mean intention tremor when you are intending to do something you get tremor if there is a cerebellar pathology and that is what is termed as intention tremor so that is one of the very important feature that differentiates cerebellar lesion from a basal ganglia lesion in a basal ganglia lesion you get resting tremor but in cerebellar lesion once you are intending to do something you get that tremor second is dysmetria third one dysmetria you find if there is a cerebellar lesion you find difficulty in uh, diagnosing or getting an idea about distances so suppose you are asked to perform the finger nose test that will be difficult in a cerebellar lesion next one is adiadocokinesis that means when you are asked to do sequencing rapid sequencing moment say pronation after that immediately you have to supinate then pronate then supinate like that if the patient is having a cerebellar lesion he won't be able to do <coughs> sorry next is speech defects will be there next is jerky nystagmus the patient will have rapid oscillatory movements to and for, fro oscillatory movements of eyeball that is what is termed as nystagmus and falling towards the side of lesion so these are the common presentations you get for a cerebellar lesion muscular hypotonia intention tremor dysmetria that is a finger nose test the patient won't be able to follow or adiacokinesia where the rapid sequential movements he won't be able to carry out such as supination pronation like that he gets speech defects jerky nystagmus and falling towards the side of lesion okay 
so one thing you have to remember always is when the person is having the cerebellar lesion the presentation will be always ipsilateral that is very important if the right side cerebellum is affected the symptoms will be present on the same side ipsilateral that is something different from that of cerebrum in cerebrum if the lesion is on the right the presentation will be contralateral but not in the case of cerebellum where the presentation will always be ipsilateral now read that the signs of cerebellar damage vertigo ataxia nystagmus intentional tremor slurred speech hypotonia exaggerated broad base gait and dysdiacokinesia so these are the signs of cerebellar damage medulloblastoma that is a cancerous brain tumor that arises in the cerebellum commonly arising from the granule cells of vermis also the patient will present with truncal ataxia and broad based gait and now one thing is herniation of tonsil look at the picture the tonsil is marked there and uh, one common feature is there is an increased intracranial pressure there is a chance of herniation of tonsil through the foramen magnum and that is one of the very common compound of the very uh, uh, life threatening complications you get if there is herniation of the tonsil uh, it can sometimes compress upon medulla and produce a large life threatening situations because it can compress the respiratory center and circulatory center present in the medulla so that is herniation of tonsil so i think with that we finish the topic so in this class in this hour we discussed about the first about the three cerebellar peduncles and the fibers passing through the peduncles and then we covered some major applied aspects of it and now i think i'll stop here and i've given some questions regarding cerebellum and i want you to answer that questions so i think it's clear now i shall leave okay thank you